being recorded. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the fifth webinar of the fourth Abbey Mid Digital Nation webinar series. In today's webinar, I'll be introducing you to some basic concepts of web application development. I will also be showing you a demo of how to create your own first web, web page using just plain HTML and CSS, and then how to deploy that on IBM Cloud. The web page that we will be creating today is a real web page that is hosted on our IBM Digital Nation platform, and it's called the About IBM page. My name is Abdullah Taslim, and I will be your presenter for today. Uh, I, graduated, I graduated as a computer scientist, and I develop um, and manage content uh, for IBM Digital Nation platform. The areas that I'd like to focus on are data science, artificial intelligence, and web application development. Um, so most probably you all know that we have a new exciting mobile application for our IBM Digital Nation platform. Uh, with this uh, application, you guys can learn digital skills, you can enroll into free courses, you can download them and learn on the go. You can, uh, and all of these are Explorer video-based courses. Um, you can earn badges and view them on your mobile app. And you can also start innovating with the Innovate page uh, by getting inspired with uh, new ideas. So feel free to click on this button for, to download our application and our, my colleague Hulud has also sent the link on the chat. Now let me give you a brief overview of the IBM Digital Nation Africa platform and show you what we have to offer. IBM Digital Nation is a self-learning and enablement platform that allows you to achieve four goals. With it, you can learn. The platform offers a wide range of courses and tools to help you learn about the latest technology trends and explore new opportunities in the real world. With uh, our platform, you can also earn badges. IBM Digital Badges are verified proof of your achievements, recognized, respected, and valued in the IT industry, and you can also be in your TV. Uh, with our platform, you can also innovate. The platform uh, gives you inspirational ideas and projects uh, basically by uh, providing you the foundation of the design thinking process, uh, allowing you to build innovative solutions on the IBM platform free, and also allowing you to get inspired with the latest ideas that IBM has implemented. Then uh, finally, with our platform, you can find jobs with the help of our job advisor tool, which is powered by the Watson technology. Uh, with this tool, uh, you can uh, find job matching relevant to your skills and perform, uh, it can also perform skill gap analysis to advise you on the available courses on the platform um, that you can add to your learning journey, basically. So with this being said, let me switch to my browser where I have the IBM Digital Nation platform open. Over here, you can see the landing page of our platform. And if you scroll down a little bit, you will see the four main sections of our um, platform, which are learn, earn badges, innovate, and find jobs. If you scroll a bit further, you will see the three different journeys that we have in our platform. Explorer offers courses that introduce you to the new emerging technologies and describe how they are being used in the real world. And in the innovator part, we are focusing on the project-based courses, uh, project-based and hands-on courses. Uh, to help you learn the technology while applying it. And then finally, in New Color, we offer courses oriented towards specific job roles. Uh, in this uh, section, you, can all, you also have the Job Advisor tool, which is powered by IBM Watson. It will help you search for jobs that best fits your skills. Today, we are focusing on the Create Your Own Web Page course, and that is available in the Innovator section. So let me go ahead and open the innovative section for you, so that it's easier for you to find that course. You can scroll down to the learning path and you can uh, select the getting started, started with the web application track. And you can find the course that we are doing today, which is to create your own web page course, All right? So with that being said, let me switch back to the presentation to continue with our demo today. All right, so what are web applications? Web applications are basically apps that use reviews in a web browser. Any website you open in a web application, for example, our own platform, IBM Destination, 
or Facebook or YouTube and so on is a web application. Uh, now we can split the web, web application into uh, front end development and back end development. And everything, everything inside the web application stems from basically these two. Front end is what you see on your screen, what you interact with within a website, the user interface of that website. Uh, for example, on YouTube, if you create an account, you log in, you search for a video, and you do much more by interacting with the front end and UI of YouTube. But there are also so many things happening on the back end side of YouTube uh, when, whilst you are working, um, whilst you are searching for your videos and so on. Um, basically, how does the website know who you are? How does the website know uh, which website you're looking for? Uh, what to display basically on the front end? All of this is happening in the back end, all right? Uh, so on the right, you can see uh, what I explained. Basically, this is how the web application uh, typically works. Uh, you have the user who is uh, working with the front end web UI of the web application. And this front end web UI is basically uh, made by HTML, CSS, and JavaScript usually. And then the back end part mainly deals with the technical stuff. Uh, which is not visible to the end user. This includes server side uh, scripting, database, scripting, so that the UI of the web application or the application can request for the required data to be shown on the desktop, on your mobile, and so on. So that's for the front end back and back end development. Uh, the last thing I just want to mention here is that there are, that there are two types of uh, websites that you can create, web pages that you can create. Uh, static and dynamic. Static web pages are ones where the data is not usually updated. It's kept uh, uh, static uh, for most of the time. And dynamic page is where uh, data is frequently changed with the help of a database. So you need to link that to a particular database. And uh, for example, over here, it's the cloud and database on the right. And uh, you can simply make changes to these database without having to make manual changes on the web page. So these are the two simple, uh, sorry, the two different type of web pages that we have. And today we will be creating the static web page, which will be the about IBM web page. Right. Uh, next, I just want to quickly focus on why uh, is, is there a need to use IBM Cloud for this? Um, with IBM Cloud, you have everything in one place. Right? Uh, once you create the uh, web application on your local environment, or if you want, you can do it on IBM Cloud itself. Uh, everything, uh, this basically, this web page needs to be hosted on some platform. So IBM Cloud helps you do that. And you don't need to focus on different tools here and there to create your web page. IBM Cloud has all these tools in one place. It's very easy to learn. In IBM Cloud, we have uh, templates which are ready to use for you. These templates help a lot in web application development. You can easily create the web page using HTML and CSS, but then deploying it online publicly for the world to use can be a tedious task. And that is why uh, today also we'll be using a template to deploy our uh, code on IBM Cloud. And you will see how easy that is. Um, then uh, finally, we have um, a lot of services on IBM Cloud that are readily available for you to use uh, inside your web application. So you can easily integrate uh, with the tons of services on IBM Cloud. Okay, so now that you have a basic understanding of the web application and now you know why are we using IBM Cloud for hosting our web page, let's quickly dive into our um, structure of our web page and the different technologies that we are going to use. So firstly, uh, let's, let's understand what is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. HTML, uh, the first page, the first uh, section over here basically tells you that the HTML is a kind of a structure uh, that, we, that we create for our web page. Uh, an example here that we are using is the human bodies. So the HTML can be thought of, the, can be thought as the skeleton structure that we have inside our bodies with the, with the bones, with the chest, with the arms, with the legs, and so on. CSS can be thought of the clothing uh, that we have on top of our bodies. So on, in terms of web application, it is a, basically a style sheet that helps you uh, organize, uh, sorry, it helps you 
make your application more colorful, make, make it more visually appealing and so on. Just like how clothing helps us uh, feel more visually appealing. Then we have the JavaScript part, which, which adds basically interactivity to the website. In terms of the body, you can see it helps the person to move his arms, his legs, his body, basically to run. And that's the idea behind JavaScript. It helps add different type of functionalities to the website. So with that being said, let's put these uh, ideas into practice, right? Today we are going to create the About IBM page. And that is uh, on the right, you can see how the About IBM page looks like on our platform. Uh, and our colleague, my colleague can also send you the link uh, that we have uh, for the About IBM page, uh, where you can go and interact with the page on our platform and see the, the type of page we are going to create today. Um, then uh, let me just quickly tell you how, it, how the particular page looks like with plain HTML. So on the left, you can see uh, the same page without any uh, visually appealing factors added to it, without any CSS added to it. We just have a plain uh, text format. We have some videos added, and they're just organized uh, basically like a structure, like a structure of a human body, right? Then once you add CSS to it, you can see uh, that the page gets more colorful. It has uh, some padding here and there. It is more uh, centered aligned, and there are different sections, different colors. Uh, so it makes basically the, the page visually appealing with the help of CSS. And then finally, once you add JavaScript, you can see that there is some interactivity on the web page. You can have a chatbot which opens and closes uh, based on if the user clicks on the X button and so on. So with that being said, let's deep dive into the HTML and CSS um, structure elements that we're gonna focus on today, all right? In today's demo, we are gonna be working with two files uh, to create the About IBM page. The first uh, file is called the index.html file, which I'm showing you on the left side. Uh, this file is basically used to define the components of our web page and structure, okay? The basic structure of HTML is as follows. First, we add the uh, doc type HTML tag. This declaration tag basically represents the document type. It is always found at the top of an HTML page as an, as an instruction for the browser, about what version of the HTML uh, page is written in. This was basically the idea for in previous HTML uh, uh, versions. Uh, we're not required to do this anymore, but it's always a good practice to add this doc type above every HTML file. Then uh, once you define this particular declaration tag, you can start off by coding your HTML tags. And we start that by adding the HTML open and close tags. This is how basically we open tags in HTML. We have the open bracket, we write the, uh, the name of that particular tag, and then we have the closing bracket. And to end a particular tag in HTML, we use the same technique, but we just have a forward slash before the element name, all right? So all your HTML elements, all the different uh, uh, text, your videos, your images will fall into this HTML tag, this basically tells us that this is an HTML page and these are the different HTML elements within um, stacks basically. So once this is done, we will go ahead and we will add the head tag. The head tag is useful for many things. Uh, one thing is the title of the web page. Uh, this title is not the title that you see over here on the screen, this title uh, that comes inside the head tag is for the titles that you see on the top of your browser. So for example, if you open any web page, uh, you will see a title on the top of your tab on your browser. So this title basically represents that. Uh, then we have another uh, line over here to link our styles sheet. So currently we are working on the index.html file. And if you want the, this particular file to know that you have some sort of clothing, you have the other styles.css file to help you make it more visually appealing. So we need to link that using this particular uh, line, right? Then uh, we have the body tags. And here is where all, most of the content resides. Inside here we have the header part, which is the heading tag uh, you, you, that you can see over here on the top. 
Uh, the, the heading that we are using over here is the H1 tags. You can, uh, the H1 tags are basically like the, the biggest heading element that we have in HTML. Uh, you, you can think of this as the, uh, the different uh, heading tags that we have in the Word document. We have the heading, you have the subheading and so on. And uh, you can do the same over here. You can change the H1 tags to H2, to H3, to H4, and so, and, and so on based on the different heading, uh, headings that you need. I'll show you more about this in the demo today. So this comes inside the header section of our page. The next is the section tags. We have different sections that we need to display on our web page. The first section that you see over here has some text. On the top, we have a line, and then we have a video. So this is what we are displaying over here. We have the paragraph tags for the first one. We have the paragraph tag for the second one. And then we have the, an iframe tag, which is basically used to display the YouTube content. Then we have the second section on over here, which basically has a different color. It has a um, quote from Thomas J. Watson, and we also show the picture of Thomas J. Watson. So that is how we have the different type of sections on our web page. Now, this is the basic uh, structure of the HTML uh, file that we will follow. Uh, the, the second file that we're going to be working with is the style.css uh, file. This file is used to basically add colors and add particular font sizes and so on. Inside the style.css, we have something called uh, classes. And to define these classes, we basically add a full stop and then we add the class name. For example, if I want to add a particular CSS to this uh, heading over here, I want to give it a color of white, and I want to move it away from the left side uh, of the page, give it some padding. So I will give it, I will add a class name to it. So I'll say white title, I can change this to whatever I want. And I'll, I'll give it a color and I'll give it some padding, all right? And now if you want to use this in our page over here, what I need to do is I just need to and call this white title class over here in this header tag. Right? And I'll show you how to do that in the demo. We just need to add a class name over here uh, um, after the H1 tag. Uh, it's very easy to do, though, do so, and I'll show you how to do that in the demo. Then uh, second example we have of CSS is the banner. On the top, you, see, you can see that there is some, um, uh, basically some length of the, the height of the banner and we have the color uh, of it as blue. So we can give it a height uh, of whatever we want. We can say 200 pixels, and we can give it a background color of dark blue, right? So, uh, to be similar to what we have over here. And obviously to use this in our HTML page, we will add this class name inside uh, our header tag also. I'll show you how to do that in our demo. Then we have something called the inline CSS. This is basically for those CSS elements which you think will not be used more than once. For example, instead of having a simple paragraph like the one shown on the left, all right, uh, we can have style tags inside this particular um, uh, paragraph tags uh, to give it a particular size which will not be used on, in any of the other text formats. So over here on what does IBM do today, Inside the HTML file itself, we can just add a style tag uh, rather than having to go to the styles or CSS file, creating a new class for it, and then going back to the uh, index.html file and adding it. We can just do directly on the index.html file itself. And I'll show you how to do that in the demo also. So this is the uh, basic structure that we'll follow for the HTML and the styles of CSS file on, in our demo today. I just wanted to give you a quick, quick heads up before we dive into the demo. All right. Uh, the next thing that I want to cover is some JavaScript examples. Uh, we won't be using JavaScript in the demo today, but it's always a good idea to know what uh, JavaScript is about and how it is used. So JavaScript is used to add some interactivity to the page. You can add it use, uh, to the HTML page, just like the CSS file that we added in our HTML page. You can do the same with the JavaScript. Um, uh, like I have shown over here. And uh, for example, if you want to add an alert pop-up uh, that says, uh, let's learn something from uh, JavaScript on your web page. So this is basically a pop-up that comes on your web page uh, where you can uh, click on OK or you can click on Close. You can add this by adding a simple script tag as you can see over here. 
and the body or the content of this particular uh, JavaScript pop-up can be uh, shown um, inside this alert type over here also. And once you click on OK, we can have uh, a text in the body that basically says that on click, on click of the particular uh, pop-up, you can uh, write something. So inside we're saying, uh, you can say, instead of saying hello, if you click on try, uh, try some calculation, it will add 10 plus six, and then it will give us the result in the web page. All right, so then let me just repeat what I said. For example, over here, we have the hello button. We have the hello uh, H1 tags, and below that we have a button saying try some calculation. And once we click on this try some calculation, all of this text will disappear and it will be filled by the addition of 10 plus six and uh, the results will be shown on the page. So that's the purpose of uh, JavaScript, to add some interactivity to the web page. But we won't be focusing on this today, we will just be focusing on HTML and CSS. If you want to learn more about JavaScript, uh, we have a course on that in our new color section and my colleague Wood will also share the link to that course in the chat. All right, so now I want to uh, move on to the Node.js. And like I mentioned earlier, we have a backend, right, that we're gonna run on the IBM Cloud. And this back, uh, backend will be done by the Node.js uh, section. So we don't have to worry about it a lot. Uh, we'll just be focusing on the front end where we create the HTML and CSS components, but it's always a good idea to understand what's happening in the back end and what are the different techniques or services that are run to basically help host our uh, uh, front end right so we use something called node.js and node.js is a javascript runtime environment that executes javascript code outside of a browser it basically helps in running scripts on the server side to produce that to produce dynamic content all right just remember that Node.js helps you to run the JavaScript code in the back end outside a browser. And in order to execute this JavaScript code in the back end, it needs to be interpreted and well executed. And Node.js does that by using a, a, a Google V8 VM, the same uh, runtime environment that JavaScript uh, that we use in Google Chrome for JavaScript, basically. So. Here is how the, the Node.js uh, works basically. We have a Node server where all the backend code uh, resides and all the packages that are needed in the Node.js reside. Uh, and then this is being used by our web browser uh, to basically display the HTML and CSS user interface. So don't worry about, about this slide a lot. I just want you to get an idea of how all of this works. We will use a template uh, of, of Node.js that we have every uh, that we have in place already. I'll show you how to download the Node.js, uh, how to install it, and how to run it uh, on your local environment. So don't worry about this a lot. If you want to learn more about Node.js, we all have a course on Node.js in the new color section. Also, uh, you guys can go ahead and take that course, and my colleague will also share the link on the chat. The, finally, I just want to mention that we'll be making use of some uh, command line interface. So command line interface is basically a text-based interface used for controlling and managing software and operating systems. It's called CMD in Windows and Terminal in Mac. When you use programs uh, with graphical user interface, certain, certain buttons uh, perform certain tasks on your screen, right? So for example, if you, if, uh, if you can see this Mac screen on the right, if, you, if I want to open this particular folder, I'll double click on that. And then if I want to open a particular folder inside, I will double click on that, right? So to do, to do the same thing in CLI, we'll need to add some certain commands uh, to display what we have on the desktop. We will say ls, so that will display all the different folders that we have on the desktop. And to enter a particular folder using CLI, we do something called cd. So uh, to enter the desktop uh, folder, we'll say cd desktop. If you want to enter the webinar folder that you can see over here, we'll, we'll say CD webinar and so on. So I just want you guys to remember these simple commands. LS is used for displaying all the folders. Uh, uh, LS is for Mac and DIR is for Windows. Uh, to open a particular folder, it's same in both Mac and Windows. We just use a CD command. And to go back to a previous folder, we do CD space dot dot, right? 
uh, we'll use uh, Cloud Foundry basically to manage our application on IBM Cloud. Um, so you can go ahead and you can download the, the Cloud Foundry, uh, the Cloud Foundry application basically on your terminal uh, with the help of this link. And uh, my colleague would also share the link on the chat. So finally, before I move on to the demo, I just want to mention that uh, you can use any code editing tool that you want. We have Visual Studio Code, we have uh, Sublime Text, we have Notepad++. You can also use a simple Notepad file to create the HTML uh, document. Uh, what I'll be using is called uh, Sublime Text. It's a code editing tool. And with this, uh, this is a very lightweight uh, code editing tool that helps you in uh, coding whatever you want in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and so on. Uh, with this tool, I can basically, uh, I have colorized markup, so I know, uh, you know, which tags that I'm using. Every tag has a different color. I can use find and replace functionality and so on. So it's, it's a bit of an advantage to use a code editing tool, but you don't necessarily have to use it. You can also use a normal notepad if you want to. But just in case you want to use this, it's an open source, uh, freely available tool. You can uh, click on this link, sublimetext.com, and you can download it. My colleague would also share the link in the chat. The demo will be as follows. First, we will create the About IBM page using simple HTML and CSS files. Uh, then we will configure Node.js on our local environment and then push that to IBM Cloud so that the uh, entire world can access it, basically. So with that being said, let me switch to my Sublime Text uh, for uh, starting how to code. What I'll do is I will have the uh, code editing tool and the web browser also open at the same time so that we can see what uh, we are coding in uh, the results of what we are coding on the web browser itself. All right. So first what we'll do is, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we need to create two files, the index.html file and the styles.css file. So I have the uh, sublime text open. What I will do is I'll click on file. I'll click on save as. And I will save this file as index.html. All right. And what I'll do is I create, I'll create another new file. I will save this file too. And this time I'll call this file styles.css. This, this will be our CSS file. All right. So we have both index.html and styles.css files in one place. Now let's start coding. The first thing we need to do is we need to uh, add the doc type, like I mentioned earlier. So to do that, we'll, we'll start with the opening uh, bracket. We'll add the expression mark, and we'll say doc type. Okay. HTML. This is our declaration tag that we'll have on the top of our HTML page. Once that is done, we need to define our HTML components, and to do that, we need to add our HTML tag. And we need to close it too. Right, so that is our HTML tags, and everything we do in our HTML page needs to be within these tags. Okay. Uh, so we'll start off by having the head tag. So I'll go ahead and I will add the head tag head and I'll close it, all right? Uh, just to make it easier for you to read, I will add some space on the left. This is what we do in HTML. For every tag that we have inside a tag, we give it some space so that it's easier to, for us to read. And inside these um, head tags, we will have the title and the, the link that I mentioned earlier, right? This head tag is where we include script tags, which are JavaScript code, um, the different meta information for a particular page, the titles, the links to another uh, web pages and so on. Uh, so, but this head is not displayed on our web page. The head is only used for internal purposes. Um, so just for, uh, as an example, I will add the title here, all right? And the title, we can say something like a webinar page. I will close the title, All right? Once this is done, uh, I can go ahead and I'll click on save. 
Okay, and I can test this on my web browser. So if I go ahead to the place where I have saved this file and double click on this, it will open uh, a new browser. Let me just open it on a new window. And you will see on the top I, uh, my title that I just wrote, webinar page is displayed over here. All right. Let me just push this on the side. All right. So this way you can see both what we are coding and you can see the results on the browser itself. All right. So we have the title in place. The next thing we need to do is um, start with the body tags, all right? I'll also indent this on the left, so that's easier for us to read. So we have the head on the top and we have the body tag over here. And inside the body tags, the first thing we need to add, if you remember in the About IPM page is the uh, blue background at the top with the About IBM title. Let me just open the page to show you how it looks like on our platform. So this is the page that we are building. So as you can see on the top, we have the blue background and we have the About IBM page, right? And this is the header of our page. So we'll start by adding that. We'll add a header. Inside the header, we will have the About IBM title. So that will be our H1 title. About IBM. And I will say webinar just to show you that we can edit this. I will close the H1 tags. And I will save it. All right. So once I save that and I, I can go back to my page, I can refresh this page over here and you will see the About IBM webinar title on the top. All right, and you can change this to whatever size you want. If, if I say H3, for example, it will increase the size of the title. I'll go back to my browser, I will refresh the page, and as you can see, the title has shrunk down to H3. Okay. We want it to be H1, so we'll just keep it as H1 for now, and I'll save it. All right, so the next thing uh, that we want to add is the uh, section. So I'm sure you are you're, you're wondering that this, this title is in black, whereas the title that we have over here is in white and we have a blue background, but we will add the CSS elements later onto our web page. Right now, we just want to create the structure, the skeleton of our web page, right? So we, we'll just work on the HTML for now. After, after the title, we have the next section. As you can see on our About IBM page, we have this text, what does IBM do today? And we have another paragraph, we have a small line in between, and then we have a video, right? So this is all in one section. So let's go ahead and add that to our HTML page. After the header, we will have another tag called section. And I will close the section also. And between the section, we will have two paragraphs. Right, and in between these paragraphs, we'll have this text. So let me just copy this from here quickly. Right, so we have both of these paragraphs in our web page. Now, what we need to do is we need to add this line in between these two texts. To add a line, what it's very simple to do that in HTML. What we just do is we add a tag called hour. That's the horizontal line. And that's about it, All right? I'll save this and I'll show you how it looks like on our browser. And there you have it. We have the header and then we have the two paragraphs separated by the line. As you can see, this line is pretty long. We want it to be short as we have in the About IBM page over here. We'll do that with CSS later on, All right. Uh, so the last thing we have on this uh, web page is the video. To add the video, if you remember, I mentioned earlier, we need to have an iframe tag. Okay, so we will create an iframe tag like this. So 
So inside this iframe, we will not have anything. The, over here, it will be blank. What we need to do is we need to add an, uh, the, video, the, the, the video link of this particular video uh, just after the iframe text. So to do that, we will say SRC, which is the source of the video, and we will add the link of the video here. All right. So now, which type of links do we need to add over here? It's pretty simple. You can click on the video. Right, so it will take you to the YouTube page. And over here on the YouTube page, let me just Grammarly does more than catch errors. Let me just skip this. So once you do this, uh, you can see there's an option over here to share. You can just click on share. Click on embed and you will have the source line over here all itself. Right. So you can just copy this. And paste it here. Right. So this is exactly the same. We have the source and we have the link. Exactly the same over here. Source and then the link. And inside the link we have the word called embed also. All right. So I'll close this YouTube video. I'll save our file. And I will see how it looks like on my page. And there you have it. All right. We have the video. We have the text. We have everything that we need for the first section. But uh, it's all aligned to the left. We want it to be aligned in the center. So to do that, we will put all of this content that we have in center tags. All right. So after a section, I will create a center tag. Uh, close the center tag right where we finish all our content. All right, let me save and go back. And as you can see, we have all this content in the center. All right, so now we are done with the HTML page uh, for the header and for the section. Uh, what we can do is we can start adding our CSS elements to beautify this page. So to do that, we will go to our styles.css file and we will add our first class. If you remember, our first class was for the about IBM webinar title. So we'll say dot white title and we'll open our curly brackets and inside this uh, we'll say what type of color we want for the title so we need a white color for our title and so we'll say color white and we want <laughs> this particular title to be away from the left side of the page a little bit right like how we have on our about IBM page we have a lot of distance from the left side of the page so to do that uh, we will go to our CSS file and we will add some padding. All right, and we will say 45 pixels. Right. All right, so the next thing we want to add is the, um, the next class, which is for the background of this particular uh, screen. So we have the about IBM title, which is in white, and it's away from the left-hand side. But on, on, the, on the back, you can see there is some banner. Uh, and this banner has a particular height, and it has a particular background. So to do that, we'll say dot, and we'll say banner. And inside this banner, we'll have a particular height. We can specify it as 200 pixels for now. And then we can also, we also need to define the color of this. So we can say background color is equal to dark blue. All right. So we have done two things over here. We have defined our title with our uh, 
basically white title with some padding on the left. And then we have the background of this particular title, which is dark blue, and it, it has a specific height of 200 pixels. Right? I have saved this. Now, what we need to do is we need to go back to our index.html page and we need to call these classes, right? So to call these classes, we will add here to our h1 tag. So we'll say class name. And uh, for this header class, basically, we will have our banner. All right, so we have defined two classes over here. For the header, which is this header, we have defined the banner class, which has the dark blue color and the height. And for the H1 tag, we have uh, the about IBM webinar title that we have over here on the screen. Right, so I'll go ahead and I'll save this and I will refresh our page. All right, so we still don't see our CSS file. Uh, we don't see our CSS elements. So does anyone know what's wrong? We have something missing on our index.html page. All right, I can see some comments uh, saying that we forgot to add the link to the CSS file in the head tag and that's exactly what we need. So we'll go ahead and we link this the CSS file. Do that we'll say link href styles of CSS file. And this styles of CSS file is our style sheet. So we'll say the relation of this particular file is style sheet. And I will save this. So we'll go back, we'll refresh this, and there we have it. We have our well, black, uh, sorry, the, the blue background, and on the top end we have a particular height for it, but our about IBM webinar title is still not working as we wanted it to. This is the, uh, what do you say, it's still black, and it's not uh, away from the screen like we, like we wanted it to, right? So I can see a comment saying that this should be, this is misspelled and that's correct. We need to change the spelling of this class. So we'll call it white title, right? So white title, this is right. We'll save it, we'll go back, we'll refresh. And there we have it. We have the about IBM title and it's away from the top and from the left. We have some certain padding. And this is about how we have it over here, almost the same, right? Uh, now you will notice that the color is a bit darker, right? Over here, what we have from the About IBM page over here. This is a bit light color. And this is because in the styles.css file, we gave it a dark uh, blue color. This is not uh, usually, uh, this is not the color that we have on our page. Usually the background colors that we have uh, use uh, hex hexadecimal digits. And the hexadecimal dig digits are basically um, the, the certain type of colors that you can use with those, and those are defined with uh, RGB, uh, RGB, color, RGB definitions, RGB different numbers, and you can get these numbers from Google if you want for any particular color. So I already have the RGB color defined for this uh, particular banner, and it's 264F93. And if I save this and I go back to the web page and I refresh, you'll see that the color is now pretty much similar to what we have on our page. So this is a particular RGB color that we have used. You can use, there are a lot of different uh, combinations that you can use and you can Google any of them and you can get whichever color you prefer, All right? So that's for the, um, basically for the header. The next thing we want to do is we want to 
enter uh, what do you call uh, this, this section and we want to improve this a little bit, right? So if you go back to the about IBM page, you will see that we have restricted the text to a certain amount of padding on the left and right. And this particular text has a particular font size and this text has, has another font size and this video has a particular height and width. Right? So let me just expand the screen and show you how it looks like. This is something that we want on our page. So to do that, we will add uh, another, some other CSS elements, all right? So we can start off by changing the, the title of the, the size of this title on our page. We want it to be a bit bigger. So to do that, we can either create another class on the styles.css file, or we can use something called inline.css. So to use inline.css, we will just straight away define the class name over here. Sorry, the class and the, the style of that particular uh, CSS right directly over here. So for what does IBM do today? We need to change the size. To change the size, we'll go over here. We will say style. And inside style, we'll give it a particular font size. Okay. So let's say 30 pixels. I'll go ahead and click on save. I'll go back to my browser, I'll refresh. And as you can see, this text has become a big, bit bigger. And this is what we wanted, right? All right, so the next thing we want to do is uh, we need to change the, the size of this particular paragraph. And uh, to do that, we can also use inline CSS over here, or we can use a class. Let's use a class this time so that we have a variation of different ways that we can use. Uh, we can call this class anything that we want. We can say IBM Today Webinar Text, maybe it's a very long name, but it's all right. And inside this uh, class, what we need is first, we need to define a particular size for this text. We need to make it a bit bigger. So I'll say font size and I will give it a particular size, let's say 22 pixels. And the second thing I want to do is I want to restrict this, the length of this sentence to be in line with, with the video and with the heading tag that we have over here. Right? So to do that, what I'll, I'll give it another attribute. and I'll call it max width. Right? So as the name suggests, we're giving the max width of this line. And we'll say we wanted about 50% of the page. Right, and I'll go ahead and click on save. I'll go back to the index.html file. And I will call this that particular class over here. Let's copy the class name since it's very long. And I'll go ahead and I'll save it. Right. I'll go back to the page. I will click on refresh. And as you can see, let me resize. You can see it's covering 50% of the page and it's resizing based on the browser uh, browser uh, size. All right, perfect. So there's one more thing that we are missing here is this particular line. As you can see on the About IBM page, we have this line uh, pretty short. So to make it short, what we need is we need to give um, our HR tag some style also. So for this also, you can either define a class or we can just directly do it over here to save time. Let me do the inline CSS. What we need to do is we need to define a width of this particular line. So we'll say width. And we want it to be a very small portion of the page. So I'll say 5% of the page. All right. I'll go ahead and click on save. I'll go to the browser. I'll refresh. And as you can see, the, the size has shrunk to a certain height. I think it looks <laughs> good. It's good enough. Um, if, if I expand the screen, you will see that the height of the video is very small. So let's give our video also some height and width. To do that, I can go to iframe over here. I can give it the width of 400. Maybe and height of 
215. All right, so we're defining the width and height of this particular video. So I'll go and I'll go back to the page and refresh. And now there is our video size. I think it looks pretty similar and it's, it looks pretty nice. We can modify this a bit more with CSS. We can add, uh, we need to add a lot more different sections, but uh, I think I'll stop over here for creating this web page. So we have created the header, we have created the section, and we have added some CSS elements to this page, and you can view it on your personal browser over here. So to, so to add the other sections to make it very similar to what we have over here in our About IBM page, we have a lot more sections, we have a lot more videos, we have a lot more CSS elements, and I explain all of this in my course, which is to create your own web page course. It's everything is detailed by step by step with the code and how the code should look like on your sublime text and how the results look like. So you can go ahead to that course, you can uh, follow the steps and you can complete this web page. So just to save time, I will quickly show you how to uh, now deploy this on IBM Cloud. Right. So to do that, you need certain um, certain things installed on your laptop, uh, on your desktop, certain libraries that you need. Uh, the first thing that you need is, you need the template file that I mentioned earlier for the Node.js. So over here in this link, if you go ahead to this link, you can get the uh, Node.js template uh, project, which we will use to deploy to IBM Cloud. So my colleague will also send the link on the channel. Uh, sorry, on the chat, uh, you can go ahead to this link, you can click on download and you can click on download zip. Right? So this will download uh, this particular template on this on your local uh, environment on your desktop. I've already done that for you. So I, do, I will not click on download zip, but you can go ahead and download this. This is the core editing tool that I mentioned earlier, Sublime Text. If you want to download this, you can go ahead and download this over here also. The next thing uh, that you need is the Cloud Foundry tool so that you can uh, basically deploy your application on IBM Cloud using the command line interface. So to do that, you can go ahead to this link and you can uh, download uh, the installer which is for your particular uh, OS. So if it's uh, Mac, you can download this. If it's Windows, you can download whatever file which is suited to your OS, all right? And once you do that, um, we have we have all the steps here on how to install. So you can follow that and install it. It's very straightforward. It will, the, the installer here will guide you through the step-by-step -step process to install it on your laptop. I've already done this, so I will skip this too. The last thing you need is Node.js. The Node.js is uh, basically the, the the framework that you will require on uh, on your local environment to run. Uh, our Node.js template file, and then also to uh, later uh, deploy it on IBM Cloud, all right? So I also have this installed on my laptop. You can go ahead to this link, and my colleague will also share this link on the chat, and you can download it for your Mac or for your Windows, whatever is uh, your OS. So with that being said, let me go to the folder where I have the Node.js uh, uh, template file already added. This is the zip file which we downloaded from the GitHub. So I'll go ahead and like extract this. All right. So this the this particular Node.js file has all these uh, files inside this. We don't need to worry about this. Uh, what we need to worry about is the public folder. So we can click on public folder, and inside you will see the index.html file and the styles.css file which is the basically the default uh, files that you uh, that you get with the template. Let me quickly show you how these index.html file and style.css file look like on, on Sublime Text. So to do that, I will open Sublime Text and I will drag and drop this particular folder, Sublime Text. And over here you can see all the different files that we have in Node.js, all right? What we are concerned with is the index.html file and styles.css file that come with this particular folder. So if I click on index.html file, you'll see a lot more code uh, which we don't need. All right. So what we need to do is we need to replace this index.html file and styles.css file with what we have 
created today. So to do that, I will go back to my folder. I'll copy the index.html file and styles.css file that I have created today. And I'll copy it over, I'll paste it over here. It's saying if I want to replace the index.html file, I'll say replace. And the same for styles.css file. So once this is done, I can go back to the index.html file and I'll see over here that this is the file that we created today. And the styles.css file has the styles.css file that we created today. Right? So now we need to deploy this on uh, IBM Cloud. So to do that, we'll go to our terminal. So to our inner terminal, like I mentioned, first we need to see where we are in the terminal and to do that we'll say ls to list all the different folders that we have. So currently we are on the root folder. So we'll go to the desktop by saying cd desktop and press enter. <clears throat> I need to go to this particular folder, which is the March 19th webinar where I have the uh, project folder uh, saved. So I can go to my terminal, I can say cd, and I can uh, basically uh, say March 19th webinar, press enter, and I can say ls, and you will see all the same content of this file that you can see on the top over here. Right? So we have the index session file, we have the styles.css file, and then we have the zip file, then we have the folder. We need to go inside this folder. So to do that, we'll say cd node hello world. And if I press ls again, you will see all the contents of this node.js template file. All right. Now this node.js template file already has certain uh, files that, that are the configuration files. Uh, it has one thing missing, which, which are the node modules, uh, which we need to install manually. So to do that, I'll say npm install and it will start installing some node.js libraries on uh, our folder over here so as you can see it has added the node modules folder so once this is done i can say npm start and this basically deploys the website on my desktop so right now it will show you how the website will look like once it's deployed to ibm cloud right now it's deployed locally so it's saying that um, uh, the, the page is being deployed on the port 8080. So to, to see this, you can go to your browser. You can say localhost and you can say 8080. All right, if I open that, you will be able to see the page that we created today. This is how the page will look like once we deploy it on IBM Cloud. So once we have confirmed if everything looks nice, if everything is working fine, we can go ahead and we can push this page to IBM Cloud. So to do that, we'll go back to our terminal. I will stop uh, this application uh, by pressing um, uh, Shift X or Control X, okay? And once that is done, um, I will start deploying this on IBM Cloud. To deploy this on IBM Cloud, I'll use something called Cloud Foundry and uh, and for, like, like I mentioned earlier, once you install Cloud Foundry, you can press CF and press enter and you will see all the different commands that are, are available on the terminal for Cloud Foundry, right? So what we need to do is we need to, we need to log in to our IBM uh, Cloud uh, account. To do that, I'll say CF login. say uh, I'll put my email address and my password for my IBM cloud which is email.com and I'll, I'll add my password it will authenticate me it looks okay so the next thing we want to do is uh, we want to make sure that the right server is selected uh, right now it's saying the server selected is the American server. I think all of us, we use the UK server. Uh, 
uh, for endpoint. So to do that, we need to specify the endpoint for our uh, account, basically. So to do that, we'll say CF API, and we'll add the endpoint. I have it open over here already. So let me just copy it. Uh, now it's changing my endpoint to the um, the UK one. If you are using your IBM Cloud account with uh, American uh, server, you can use this command basically API.ng. But uh, I think most of us are using the UK server, so we can just go ahead and with the first one, which is the EU slash GB. This is a, both both these commands are available in in my course. You can choose whichever one is uh, suitable for you and use that. So right now it's saying the endpoint has been switched to the UK one, but it has logged me out. So let me log in again. Let's log in, I will enter my email address. Enter my password. And once that is done, what we need to do is we need to push our application to uh, IBM Cloud, right? So if I press LS, you will see that we are currently inside the node hello world master template file that we have created to be deployed on IBM Cloud. It has both the index.html file and the styles of CSS file. So we'll just straight away say CF push, right? CF push to IBM Cloud. Once we do that, it will, our the terminal, what it will do is it will start uh, gathering all this information in our uh, folder. It will take all these files, all the different node modules, our index.html file, our styles of CSS file, and it will push it to IBM Cloud so that anyone in the world can access it with a single link. All right. Um, so this is basically a, a gist of uh, uh, how to create uh, a professional looking web page with HTML and CSS and how we can package it all together in Node.js and then we can finally deploy it to IBM Cloud. Uh, with that being said, uh, our web page is not complete, right? Like, like I mentioned, we just finished the header and the section part of our website. If you want to continue building on top of this, you can go to our uh, course, which is create your own web page course, and uh, you can uh, copy all the different steps that we have available over there. So now over here, on, you can see in the terminal that the deployment is complete. And it has, it has given me the link of how, what my application is named. I'll go and I'll copy this. And I'll paste this link on my browser. And as you can see, this is our web page on hosted on our IBM Cloud. So anyone in the world can access this. You can just give them the link and you'll be able to access it anywhere you want. So that's about it for the demo uh, is there any questions is there any feedback please send it out on the qa and the chat pin and i will try my best to answer that so if you have any questions please feel free to enter them in the chat and the qa While you're sending your questions, let me just quickly uh, tell you uh, about the different courses that we have on, I, on our platform. So the course that I showed you today was the Create Your Own Web Page, which is available in the Innovator section. But uh, that is not just the only course that we have on our platform. We have a lot more courses. We have uh, about, uh, I think, 16 or courses. And we continuously keep on adding new courses to our uh, web application track. Uh, our web application track basically starts with the introduction to coding course uh, in the Explorer journey. Then we move on to the innovator course where we have the create your own web page course and then we have the uh, visitor tracking application courses. If you want to, what we did today was basically go down on our local environment and then push it to IBM Cloud. Uh, the other two courses that we have in the innovator section, you do not need to do that. You can directly code on IBM Cloud itself and deploy your application over there. 
So if you don't want to use local tools, you can go ahead and take these two courses to learn how to create the backend and front end on IBM Cloud. Other than that, if you want to further advance your skills, you can go to the new color section and you can take a lot more courses that we have available for you guys to learn from. Finally, I just want to mention that we have an excellent course called Introduction to, Co Introduction to Coding Course in the Explorer Learning Journey. This course basically gives you an overall idea of how our, our, the different programming languages are being used in today's world, the different use cases that we have. And it also has an inter in very interesting uh, course called Blockly. Uh, Blockly uh, is an excellent way for you guys to le uh, learn coding from scratch. It helps you learn JavaScript, Python, with the help of just uh, dragging and dropping uh, blocks, like how you see over here. Uh, over here, you can see I have drag and drops a particular uh, blocks to basically print uh, numbers from five to one. And once you do that, you can also display that uh, code in JavaScript and Python, how it looks like. And then you can also see the result of that particular code. This is a very interesting and nice way to learn coding. If you're interested, so you can go ahead, go ahead to the introduction to coding course. And inside there is a module called Blockly, and you can learn from there. That's about it for the webinar today. Uh, if you have any questions, please, please feel free to send them on the QA and in the chat below, and I'll try my best to answer them. Okay, thank you the love for this uh, webinar. I know I'm getting a lot of questions on the chat and on the, on the Q and A panel on the recording and the presentation of this session. I will definitely make them available and uh, upload them on Box and share the link with you on all of your emails. I have a record of all of your emails, so don't worry about that. I'm gonna send them to you. And uh, for now, we're just gonna uh, monitor the chat and the Q and A panel to see who has questions for Abdullah, okay? And then if you would like to stay uh, a bit with us until uh, another around 25 or 20 minutes for um, a mini majlis, majlis session uh, as usual. Um, so let's first answer your questions regarding this webinar and then we'll move to the majlis session. So there is a question uh, saying, can you please explain the functionalities of Doctype in your HTML file? So like I mentioned, Doctype is not really required nowadays since uh, the new HTML format uh, does this automatically for you. But this is basically uh, how we define HTML page. We declare a Doctype at the top just to tell the browser what, type, what version of HTML uh, you're using. So it's easier for them to interpret. interpret. It's not required, it's just a formality, and it's a good idea to have it in your HTML file. Uh, there's another question saying, I'm using Notepad++. I hope that doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. Like I mentioned earlier, you can use any, any type of code editing tool that you want. Uh, you can also use a Notepad, just a simple Notepad if you want to write your HTML file and your CSS file. Just make sure that once you save the file, it's saved in the right format. So you need to save it with the name index.html and you need to save it with the name styles.css for it to work, all right? There's another person saying that we will require the video after this class. Um, my colleague just mentioned that we are recording all of this and we will send this recording to you guys once it's finalized. And also on top of that, we have the, this whole course. Uh, as you can see on the screen, we have the link to this course and my colleague has shared the link with you on chat also. Uh, in, inside this course, you have the step-by-step -step instructions of what I, whatever I did today and the step-by-step -step instructions of the continuation of that particular about IBM page, right? So you can go ahead to that page, sorry, you can go ahead to the course, you can complete your page, you can deploy it to IBM Cloud and you can play around with it and you can also get your badge for it, right? There's 
what else Uh, we have another question saying um, a part of Sublime and Notepad, which text is it, uh, editor is good for the HTML and CSS coding? So uh, Sublime text is good, Notepad++ is good. Uh, as I mentioned, you can also use Notepad, just simple Notepad on your Windows machine. If you want to use a proper code editing tool, you can also use Visual Studio Code. Uh, so all of these are different available tools uh, that you have. There are a lot more available on uh, on the internet. You can just Google them and you can find whatever suits your needs. I have a very good question on the chat saying, how do IBM badges help someone professionally? So that's a very good question. Uh, so IBM badges give you the opportunity to market yourself and show everyone else what you have learned and what you have achieved. So once you complete the courses and uh, complete uh, and finish the courses and just complete the quizzes, you will have these badges which you can put on your CVs or share on your social media and even put them on your LinkedIn account. So it's a very good way to show everyone else what you have achieved and what you have learned. Okay, so this is how the badges can help you professionally. We have another question saying, why uh, the iframe tag? What is the iframe tag, Abdullah? So the iframe tag is basically used to embed pages on our, our page itself. So technically what we are doing is we are embedding the YouTube page, the YouTube video on our uh, web page, and that is why we need the iframe tags. Okay, I have a question here saying um, that they have downloaded the CLI, but they don't know how to make it working or how to start it in their CMD. Is there any specific instructions they need to follow uh, in order so to start it? Just make sure that once you install, uh, once you are in the CLI page, let me just show it on my browser. So this is the CLI page where we install the uh, command, command foundry from. Just make sure that you install the right package from the installer section. Once you do that, this will automatically guide you through the step-by-step -step instructions that you need to install it on your uh, machine, it's nothing much. It will just ask you to ask you to, for verification to install. Once you do that, and once you have installed the, basically the Cloud Foundry on your CLI, you can go to your CLI and you can say CF, right? And once you say CF, you will be able to see all the different uh, commands that are, that are associated with Cloud Foundry. If you don't see the, all these commands, it means that your Cloud Foundry has not been installed properly and you need to uh, check what's wrong. So for that, you can, so you can scroll down on your page and you can see the different issues uh, that people are, might have uh, with installing this particular uh, Cloud Foundry and uh, you can fix them from here. But it should be fine, honestly, because this installer does everything for you. We have another question saying, do we really need to use Cloud Foundry? So just to make it simple and easy to use, uh, um, I have used the Cloud Foundry in this um, webinar. And in my course also, I use the Cloud Foundry tool, but you don't necessarily need to use it. If you want, you can directly uh, upload or directly code the index.html and styles or CSS on IBM Cloud itself. We have a code editing tool on IBM Cloud, which helps you do this. Uh, and if you want to learn how to do that, uh, you can take the second course in uh, our innovator journey, which is how to create the back end of a visitor tracking application. And that will teach you how to basically code and deploy on IBM Cloud itself. Um, I, I got some questions of users asking about um, 
So after creating an account and logging into cloud and um, how the, the, or the page was pushed. So they're just asking about the cloud, cloud foundry as well. Um, so uh, can, can you please Abdullah, elaborate more on the process of pushing the page? Sure, so if you want to push a particular page to IBM Cloud, first we need to make sure we are in the right directory, all right? So currently, if I say LS over here, you will see that I am in uh, my note, hello world master folder, which is the project folder that we created today, all right? So we need to make sure that we are inside the project folder that we, create, that we have created uh, for deploying on IBM Cloud. Inside this project folder, you will find all the different Node.js files, and you'll also find the public folder. So if I say CD public, you will, you, you will find the index or HTML and styles or CSS file, all right? So with, with all of these files, uh, if you can see all of these files, it means you are in the right directory. You need to make sure that you have installed all the Node.js modules, all right? do that we need to do the npm install once you do that it will install all the different uh, libraries and all the different modules that are needed uh, for your back end for your node.js application it does everything for you automatically once that is done all you need to do is you need to log in to your ibm cloud account to log into your ibm cloud account you need to say cf login and uh, once you do that it will ask you for your email address and for your password once you give that, you can just directly say CF push and it will push all the contents that you are uh, of where you are currently to IBM Cloud. So that will basically push your Node.js application to IBM Cloud and it will be ready for you to use. There's another question saying how to configure my own domain for the site and deploy. So um, the uh, the, the, the configuration file of the Node.js can be changed a little bit so that you can have your own uh, type of text in, in the domain. Uh, but uh, the domain on IBM Cloud pretty much stays the same. It, it will definitely have .ibm.com at the end. Uh, but if you want to have your own domain, you will need to purchase that uh, on one of the hosting websites. You can Google that and see uh, how to do that. Uh, that's a different uh, scenario. There's another question from Eric saying, how can you insert feature with live updates? I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that. Maybe, maybe you mean uh, how to configure the web application with, uh, with, with, with the database so that you can dynamically uh, update uh, the files. If you want to do that, I have a whole course uh, in my innovative journey, which is the uh, create your own back end application. In that, in that course, uh, what, you, what I teach is basically, what we teach is basically how to create a web page, how to integrate your database and your back end with that web page so that you can dynamically uh, update all your information on, uh, on your page itself. So if that's your question, then hopefully I've answered that. Okay, do we have more questions? Um, we, have, we have Peter saying that his CF login command is not working from his command prompt. Uh, I'm not sure what's the issue here. Maybe you didn't install uh, the uh, Cloud Foundry properly. Uh, you can go back to the course and you can go back to the recording just to make sure if you have everything in place correctly. If you're still having problems, you can send an email out to me and I'll help you debug the problem. 